with me Abha, the author of Nucleus Power Women, lead from the core, mental strength coach, leadership speaker, lawyer, poet, actor, and a firm believer that rules are either to be upgraded all the time or they must not be there at all, not in any way that reduces human growth. You know, on this show, we are committed to bring to you exceptional people, game changers, people who have transformed thought across the world and they have gone beyond themselves to serve the world in ways that people could never have imagined. And guess what? They are here to demystify the rules game for us. They are here to share the insights of their journeys with us so we can break out of what we find limiting in our lives and break into something that we find necessary for us. My guest today, ah, I, I, I have no words to describe this, uh, this beautiful, I, I don't even know what to call her. She, she is one of the most powerful and empowered and enlightened women I know. She has moved beyond... Uh, you know, uh, the whole idea of consciousness has been brought into this uh, world in the last 20 to 30 years by this woman. Her exploration and her she's an explorer of consciousness. And in her lifetime, which has spanned over 45 years, she has gone through the study of Hinduism, Zen, mysticism, Advait and Vajrayana, Buddhism. She was ordained not as a Buddhist nun, but as a monk who once has received, a uh, one person who has received the complete esoteric teachings. Moving beyond all these disciplines and titles, she is now the living embodiment of her own wisdom gained via many lifetimes of experience. An eclectic landscape herself, a multi-dimensional playing field of creativity, fearlessness and magic. And you know what? Most notably in this lifetime, she has been that warrior, the warrior persona in her who facilitated the dismantling of the underlying structure of patriarchy in this world, a collaborative effort that captured, that is captured in her award-winning book, Unplugging the Patriarchy. You probably know who I'm talking about, but one more thing about her, which is very, very powerful. She is a highly trained mystic and is a walking encyclopedia of the mystical arts, a master of navigating alternate dimensions. As a mystical stalker, she can ferret out the root of your problem. As a dreamer, she can mentor you how to dream a more refined life and ultimately dissolve the dream to move into formlessness. As a manifester, she can conceive of something, then magically allow it to come into form. Please welcome, and I'm, I'm so grateful for having her here. Please welcome Lucia Renan. Lucia, how are you? <laughs> I'm I'm good. That introduction was so over the top and is it? <laughs> <laughs> I I just want to to modify it by saying one thing if I can. Sure. Those things are true, but I also am a woman. And the things that you say that I have accomplished they're true, but really those are the things that any human being on the earth can accomplish. And not to accomplish them is to simply not realize our own potential. I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. And I think I was coming to that and saying as a woman, uh, is, is it any different for a woman? Is it any different for a man? Because I get this question many times myself, uh, because what you, you've accomplished is pure human potential and being able to walk beyond normal uh, ground level activity. So please just let us know. Um, you, you are in a place of uh, almost reaching a, a, a place of formlessness, which is what you've been teaching now to people and helping and mentoring people to understand what that means. So I would love you to just let us all know what that means and what how people can start on that journey or if they're already on a path what can they do now? What must they do now? Well, I think you point in the right direction in asking, is it different for men and women? And the end result is no different. At the end of the day, we are both masculine and feminine, and we are 
uh, beyond both definitions, both the the dual states of masculine and feminine. That's the enlightenment process that anyone engages with when they step on a spiritual path, is balancing out that most important polarity in our lives because on that out-of-balance polarity, all other out-of-balance issues in the world are predicated. And I, I know that you know this. You spend a lot of time talking about balancing that out and assisting women in their journey. So the problem that we face in particular for the journey of men and the journey of women on the spiritual path is 5,000 years of conditioning that has given us either a pink package, at least this is how we would refer to it in my part of the world, (laughs) and a blue package, right? So, So women are taught that they are nurturing and receptive and quiet and dependent upon a man in their lives. And their child bearers, you know, if we go way back, women are chattel to men. And and then if we look at the blue package, you know, I, I am the breadwinner. I must always be strong. I can never show my emotions. I am entitled to rule the roost, so to speak. And that conditioning is born of a patriarchal, a male-dominated society, no judgment on my part, just a 5,000-year learning that humanity has undergone about power and abuse of power. But now the energies on the planet are completely and utterly different. The veils of illusion are so thin that it is possible to look beyond that conditioning if a person is willing and to see, all right, no blame, No judgment for that, but I as a woman must now explore my own power. I must explore the solar, what I call the solar aspect of my being, that aspect which is power and creativity and uh, outgoingness, right, that is usually thought of as masculine. And men can begin to explore the lunar aspect, what is normally thought of as female on the planet, that which is nurturing and receptive. And only then, only then if we have the humility to do that for ourselves, can we really assume our own stance of power. And it really, it doesn't matter what the embodiment is. If the embodiment is feminine, yes, that comes with certain disadvantages and advantages, and the same for the masculine. But it's about transcending all of that and simply standing as who we are, which is really the only thing that we can do on the planet better than anybody else. Just be who we are. Right. I'm I'm fascinated because this whole solar and lunar uh, thing, the sun and moon thing, the masculine and the feminine, the male and the female, it has caused such a huge struggle in people's lives. And I think generations have gone by wondering. I think I've seen at least two generations prior to mine where my mother and her mother these are women who have nurtured us to become who we are today. And I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be in a place where I can talk about this, but a lot of women don't get an opportunity to do that. So uh, this, this whole, uh, I think the new paradigm of consciousness is transcending from that male-female perspective and taking us beyond to a point where we have to start looking at the, uh, the, the, the true form of energy that is, that is um, not necessarily masculine or feminine, which is simply human and potential energy. So would you like to just take us through that part of life, which, which says you are here and you are, uh, you are a pure form of energy and that purity is coming from inside of you? Well, the way we need to begin, I think, is to go back a little bit in time, because I think the fear that many men hold is that somehow we're going to, women want to go into a matrilinear or a matriarchal society, and there's going to be some retribution for all of the control and the hierarchy and the oppression that has taken place throughout the 5,000-year patriarchy. And that's not true. We went through a matrilinear society before we went through patriarchy. 
And as I meditated on that and I express in my book, um, there was a deep seeing on the part of women that if they did not hand off the reins of power to men during this 5,000-year period, you know, seers, their job is to sit and go into other dimensions and look forward into the future and predict what's going to happen and say, all right, what is the next move on the chessboard? And at that point, women uh, collectively at a very deep psychic level understood that if they did not hand off the reins of power so that men could have this learning about power and abuse of power, uh, that they would never be able to ascend at this time on the planet to the, to the heart which is where we are now. Power is the navel chakra, which I place below the chakra or the energy center. You're conversant with that. Right, yes. uh, that I place below the, uh, the physical navel. Right. So we were at the second chakra, that of creativity and birth, in the matrilinear times. Now we, we moved up more recently into the third chakra to learn about power. It's the very same as a person ascending. You pull your kundalini energy, mm-hmm. the energy of life and creativity, up through the various chakra levels until finally it, it reaches the crown chakra. It it merges with that which is universal, and there is no more differentiation. Right. So now we have physically and and uh, spiritually, energetically, moved up to the heart chakra. So men need, in my estimation, have no fear about what's coming. We're moving into my seeing is into an egalitarian situation where both the masculine and the feminine, where both the solar and the lunar, perhaps less threatening terms, are are valued equally because there are differences, there are advantages, there are disadvantages. So we are now learning or approaching a learning to work together to use the advantages of both the masculine and the feminine and to operate society in an open-minded, open, heartfelt way. Yes? Very Is that- Yes. Is this answering your yes, question, yes, or yes, am I? Is. I'm coming okay. to the next one because, like, uh, this is a, 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 it is absolutely we are we are moving from this place, and I, I I think when when you mentioned about moving up from the center, the navel chakra, up to the heart chakra, and we can see that shift of energy in the last couple of years, ever since the time of this ascension has begun, we've seen a huge and massive shift in the way. Uh, women or the divine feminine or the feminine uh, is also being received in in society in general uh, for the advantages that it can bring to the table, not just in the spiritual perspective or in the spiritual sense, but also in the physical sense, apart from what we biologically are uh, are equipped to do. So uh, very clearly, if if I if I would ask you that this whole process of ascension not Uh, from the individual perspective to the larger perspective where we are now seeing that the vibration uh, of of the whole earth vibration is moving to a different level altogether. And it is visible in the way things are moving um, uh, towards. I mean, we are looking at at, at, uh, probably imagining or uh, moving towards, walking towards a place where we see uh, what you just mentioned, an egalitarian situation. Uh, and apart from an egalitarian situation, which is just male, female, or a masculine, feminine thing, I think it is transcending to a different space altogether. So you are talking about energies of 2016. I read about uh, that, and you're very actively at the moment. Uh, 2016 is on uh, everybody's mind, and you are showing the way towards what 2016 could be like. So if you could just connect this whole ascension process, ascension process individually and to the earth energy, how are we supposed to look at it? 
Yeah, and and so let's go back to what I just said and and look at it energetically because we talked through it in terms of societies and um, expression of male and female. But let's go back a few years, as you suggest, and let's look energetically at what has happened because we came through a 5,000-year patriarchy that was all about form and structure. The third dimension itself is about form, bringing things into form, manifesting things into form, the expression of consciousness through form. So it was a massive learning about form. But if we regress to 2012, December 21st, and we look very, very carefully at the energies, the shift in energy that occurred, it was minute. We had been giving up form and bringing into being fluidity for some years, but it was almost not noticeable. You know, things have to happen on an energetic level first, and then they filter down into the third dimension very, very gradually. It's like if you go to a healer and they're touching your body or maybe they're moving the energy above the body, above the meridians, they can heal you. But it takes time for that to soak down into the physical body. And it's the same with the earth, as I know you know. Right. So, so if we go back to that moment in time, just the the winter solstice or the December solstice, depending upon where you are on the planet, of 2012, there was a minute shift where structure ended and fluidity began in earnest, right? Mm-hmm. Now, structure is passé, fluidity is fashionable, <laughs> energetically, yes? Right. And so we have been in the last couple of years – undergoing learnings about fluidity. This is what's shaking everybody up so much. If people are clinging to structure, if they're clinging to hierarchy and control, they are having a very rough ride. It's like going, you know, in your car very fast down the freeway with a loose bumper. Mm -hmm. And as you accelerate, the bumper finally is vibrating so hard it falls off. Yeah. So anything in our lives where we are clinging to control, where we are afraid to let go and move into a more, to tie it back into our discussion, open-minded, open-hearted, fluid way of being, we are having problems. And this is the gift of the time. The earth is cycling in her evolution, in her spiritual vibration, and leading the way for all of us. And she's basically saying, if she could speak, just follow me, just sync up with me, let go. I've got everything. You're right in my hands. Trust your connection with the divine and with me the physical embodiment on which you live, because this is an experiment in consciousness which combines those two things, the divine housed within a human embodiment, right? Right. So we went through, uh, what, three years of learning about fluidity, learning to let go, having our control issues coming up in our face and saying, oh, my God, I've got to look at this. What is this pattern in my life? Why is it that I keep going into reaction? Why is it that I become miserable after going into reaction? And now, at the beginning of this year, after the winter solstice of 2015, we actually moved from fluidity into formlessness. This is another huge change. It's like moving from the water. This is the way I expressed it, I think, in the blog that you read. It's like we've been in the river and we've been going with the flow in our boat and then you have to give up the boat and get in the river and just allow the river to take you. But now... We have transcended even that. It's like we've risen up as a bird in the sky who is simply sailing in the air currents. There's nothing to hold on to anymore. Right. So I've recently been talking about how do you ground? You don't ground in the same way anymore. We used to 
you know, okay, let's send a line out of our root chakra down into the earth and anchor with her core so we feel stable. But there's no grounding in that manner anymore. At least that's my perception. There are just these two things riding the air currents. There's the divinity that we all have access to, that we all are at our core. And there is this embodiment, this personal self, this woman, as I said, as we began after the introduction, those two things, we may have achieved formlessness, but we're still a woman who eats and washes the dishes and allows the dog out of the door to go pee, right? This is life (laughs) on the human plane. And that doesn't go away. That doesn't change, really. I mean, our awareness becomes unbounded. We stop suffering if we're willing to do the work on ourselves. But there will always be, as long as we are in incarnation, the personal embodiment. Right. So, so we've moved into this beautiful, beautiful, if we can release into it, formless state where we can literally sync up with spirit itself and allow ourselves to be in perfect harmony, in perfect union with that, guided at every moment, yeah? Right. It doesn't mean that issues still don't come up. They do. They They come up. Yes. Yeah, they come. Yes. They come up for all of us. They come up for me. It's just to what degree are they still coming up? To what degree are you willing to change and learn a technique that will help you process your emotional baggage? To what degree are you willing to overcome your fear of cultural conditioning, masculine, feminine conditioning? To what degree are you willing to navigate the emotional body, whatever it is that is a limitation that you are still holding in your egoic structure? If you are willing to do that work now on yourself, it goes at the speed of light. Right. Right. Because everything is in support of that now. Everything in the external world energetically supports that. And if you simply believe that you can, that you can change your conditioning, that you can learn a processing technique, that you can achieve fluidity and formlessness, that you can sync up with the earth and her vibration. Just that belief can catapult you into a very, very rapid transition out of the ignorance of the human condition and into divinity itself. I I am so fascinated. I'm personally extremely excited about what we are seeing in the last uh, three, four years. And uh, like you say, that uh, um, since uh, 2012 solstice, we have given a form and moved into fluidity and expressing that consciousness now through a, 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 a sense of formlessness. But the question that comes up here, and which is why I, I get asked uh, this question a lot of time, people fear Uh, a lot in terms of uh, flowing with what is going on because I think as uh, as a human being who who is still you know like you say we we still have the human side going on uh, which which uh, needs to go probably raise kids and you know do all the normal things sometimes a lot of uh, uh, people think fear is something that walks into their mind or their heart or their body uh, for them not to believe that this is going to work. How does that one get over that? Because a lot of things are happening now. People are literally, you know, the strange things are happening to people in terms of their bodies, their health, uh, because things are shifting energetically and they cannot understand what is going on fully. Yeah. Well, things are manifesting very, very rapidly. So one issue, as you point out, that people are having is if if we do not deal with something at a mental, emotional, and or vibratory level as it is manifesting in consciousness, it eventually comes down into the physical body and manifests as disease. Right. People don't just 
get cancer because it's contagious or it's the, you know, it's the disease of the day. They get it because they are running a program. They're running, uh, uh, it's like a groove in a, in a record or a CD, yeah? The, the, uh, something is laid down in that groove. And so if we repeat a certain behavioral pattern, if we react in a certain way, if we're always thinking that we're a victim and there's a tyrant outside of us, we run that program again and again and again. And finally, it comes to rest in the physical body because spirit in its ultimate wisdom, says, this is the only way she's ever going to notice this. I'm going to have to seriously point this out to this person. And, And indeed, at that point, that's shocking. And the person says, oh, my God, now I have to deal with this. I have a disease, yeah? So, so we can work things out in two ways. We can work these issues, these grooves, these programs that we run. We can work out the aspects of what I call the egoic structure right. that we use as defense and protection around us, either in the physical which is very, very slow and painful. It means lots of human suffering. Or we can smarten up and we can work through those things on the level of consciousness. And that's fast. It's still painful because, as you point out, fear is painful. It's a painful vibration in the body. But we can do it so much faster, exponentially faster, And so in order to really understand how that works, we we have to understand the mechanics of consciousness and how something expresses itself in consciousness, yes? That's the whole study, really, of spirituality and emotional processing, which is certainly gaining in popularity, at least for women. The The difference here is that women never gave up access to their full emotional body. They never shut their emotional bodies down. They can go down on the emotional scale and feel shame. They can feel fear. They can feel the desire to die. They can go all the way down through what some call the downward spiral of emotions. Men shut almost half of their emotional body down. When a man reaches shame, that's it. He's been programmed with that blue package to think, I can't go any further. I have to be strong for the family. I have to maintain. So this is a huge disadvantage for men. So my recommendation is different for women and for men in terms of gaining an understanding of the mechanics of the way consciousness works and beginning to examine and process our issues. Right. For both, I recommend reading a book. Unfortunately, it's probably not translated into Hindi, but it's... It's in English, The the Marriage of Spirit by Leslie Temple Thurston. Okay. It's... It's really the authoritative writing on how consciousness has manifested in duality, how we hold polarities within our consciousness, and how that ends up manifesting as suffering in one's life stream. If a woman if a woman reads that book, then she needs to learn, and I'll come back to men if I don't remind me, but a woman after she gets that mental understanding which is very helpful because we've been so programmed to think, oh, the mind is all important. The mind has to run the live stream and make all the decisions. Well, if that's the case, then let's use the mind to understand the mechanics of consciousness. And once we have that mental understanding, then if a woman can learn an emotional processing technique, Mm -hmm. she can then learn to navigate the whole emotional playing field because she has access to it. Right. That stage, a woman needs to learn this simple thing. Fear is still another emotion, only another another emotion. It's painful, yes. It's intense, yes. It burns when it's in the body, yes. But it is just another emotion. And every emotional process is predicated. Its foundation, once you get down through all of the layers, 
is fear. Everything is fear-based. Right. That is not love-based. We know this. That's right. the dual system, either fear or love. Yes. So when we're dealing with limitations, we're dealing with processes that are fear-based. Once a woman figures out that she has the strength, and she does, she never lost her power. She only handed over the reins. But if you will look closely at what happens in any culture throughout the patriarchy with women, they are holding the whole bloody culture. Right. It is true. The cultures would collapse without them. Women, a, woman, a woman's spiritual essence is power. It always has been. Right. The ability to take power and wield it from other dimensions, the ability to hold it in her body, the, the, the ability to give birth, for goodness sakes, the ability to pull it, pull it up into her heart and wield power with balance. This is the essence of the female. Right. It, it's so, so Yeah. Yeah, please. So, so if a woman can learn that she can use her innate power to navigate through fear, that's it. She's home free because she can go through every emotional issue, vibratory issue that she's holding in her egoic structure right. and bring it to rest now in, in a record time. Right. I think this is so powerful and this is so empowering to know uh, that the, the power that a woman possesses or is born with and this whole access to her emotional self and being able to navigate or process that information or that emotion as a full being, as a whole being, that is where all the power lies. And unfortunately, all this conditioning has left us drained and exhausted, wondering where is our power? So yeah. I, I, I am... I'm, extremely fascinated by the your your um, uh, your version of how a woman can access her own power through her own emotional makeup and and be able to understand that it is existing there we just need to go and and we just need to go and tap into that and understand how that works and then we are almost uh, not almost but we, we can be completely fearless after that yeah, you can be free. There are two main issues that women work with, and we don't want to forget to return to men. Yes, yes, <laughs> we, um, we, we don't want to leave them out. Right. But, but women deal with victim, victim tyrant. That's right. the polarity. So w women have a tendency to feel victimized and put a tyrant outside, a husband, a father, a society, a culture, a government, whatever it is, God, our lives. We're victimized by these things, yes? So yes. that polarity expresses itself in women's lives in different ways. And the other quality is worthlessness. Right. Because with that pink package, that's the way we were conditioned to think of ourselves right. as second-class citizens. Right. So, you know, it's a matter of taking those two polarities and working with them. Always, if there is a polarity being held, then we have to recognize that we are holding the other side of the polarity in our unconsciousness. Right. If we're feeling that we are a victim, somewhere in there, there is tyrannical behavior. Right. Yeah. Right, right. This is where humility comes in on the spiritual quest. Absolutely. So I have to be willing, in order to balance that out in my own being, I have to be willing to say, uh, you know, maybe it expresses itself for a woman as, I'm, uh, you know, I have been victimized my entire life by men, and I, I am angry as hell about it. I'm in rage, yeah, and and yes, <laughs> our rage is just an expression of our power right. with a spin on it. It's it's our power out of balance. Right. So those two things are there, but if we work with them on the level of consciousness so that we bring them to rest, if we can admit our own tyrannical behavior and our own victim, right. then we enter into a state of mind where we begin to look at the world and see, oh my God, my father or my husband is not the tyrant. They're suffering in a completely different way and holding worthlessness right. in the unconscious. But their programming is such that they could never go down and feel that worthlessness. Right. So 
actually the plight of men on the planet is far more difficult and painful than it is for women. Yes. I, I, have, I have mentioned that in my own book called Nucleus, uh, Power Women Lead from the Core. And that's all, also a place of consciousness. But I, I truly, I, I believe that I think as much as we as women are um, now fighting for this whole idea of being worthy and uh, being independent and so on and so forth, I think men have gone through a similar process and probably worse because they can never, I think, the way they are conditioned and the way they have lived for centuries, they probably may not even get an opportunity to express the, uh, a part of them which is an essential or an, uh, or an absolutely fundamental part of any human mind and body, and that is their emotions. And how do, how do they get out of it? Uh, so sometimes I've, I, I've, in my research and the work that I've been doing, there, there has to be a combination. There has to be a complementarity sitting over there for women to be able to help men and men to be able to help women with their both uh, with their sides, both the masculine and the feminine sides, being able to complement each other in whatever way possible. Uh, if we have to bring it on the ground, so it's very true what you're saying, and I'm 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 absolutely with you on that one. Yeah, and it is possible for women to help their men. It just it just needs to happen, in my estimation, in a way which we don't originally think of. So, so let's talk about the plight of men for a moment, because yeah. then we can come, come back full circle and talk about how we can help each other, right. which is a, an excellent point that you're making. But for men, I suggest that they read this book or something equivalent, The Marriage of Spirit, because men are very much prone to intellectualize things, very often to over-intellectualize things to depend too much on the mind because they've shut the emotional body down. And if they read the book, then again, that person has an intellectual understanding of the mechanics of the way consciousness works. Then there is one key piece that a man needs to have the humility to recognize. They need to recognize that Women are not second-class citizens, that women have value. They need to stop, and, and I don't know how to do it because, frankly, I haven't worked with men in as much depth as, as I have worked with women. My assignment has been to help women stand in their power. But there are groups out there. There are avenues out there. A man has to get over this notion which is very, very prevalent in your part of the world, right. that, that a woman needs to pray for a male incarnation uh -huh. in order to become self-realized. Right. Yeah? Right. As long as a man in this current energetic configuration, which is technically no longer the patriarchy, holds that belief... I, Leslie Temple Thurston, who wrote this book, had a beautiful analogy. She said, it used to be that there was a highway for men to achieve self-realization. And women had this little tiny path over to the side. They had to, to take the crumbs from the table you know, of the spiritual masters because they weren't allowed full spirit. Stairs. Now it is absolutely the reverse. There is a 10-lane highway for women's enlightenment. Right. And if a man cannot understand that we are balancing out the masculine and feminine, if he cannot find in his heart somewhere the ability to respect and honor the feminine, he has a little tiny path towards self-realization over to the side. Right. So if a man wants on that broad highway, he must find a way to honor the feminine. That's all it takes. Right. Then, in order to help him gain access, regain access to his emotional body, he simply has to hang out with women and learn from them. Because from feeling them, from watching them, from listening to them navigate their emotional bodies, he begins to bring that back online for himself. Yes? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that is the way. Um, and you mentioned about what, what we, like I, I'm, I'm born and raised in India and I've lived in different parts of the world and primarily Asia. 
it's uh, you know the cultures the way things have been taught and the th- the way things have been misunderstood uh, even our scriptures are misunderstood if i can say so um, not many people really know what things mean over there and there are a lot of these big masters sitting over there telling us what to do and then then there are women like myself who just don't listen you know they, yeah. it doesn't appeal to me because i don't think as a, as as a conscious uh, uh, as a person who's who's exploring consciousness myself and walking that path i don't truly uh, appreciate what they are saying and i i think it's false uh, so somewhere down the line i think it's a matter of time that we're going to be seeing a lot of change and what do you say in terms of the the masculine being able to honor the feminine and being able to open their their themselves with the help of the feminine because of the emotional power that women have that could probably alter the way men and women have ever been together so i i think we we must uh, and like you say the time is time is close that these kind of things are going to happen soon yeah and 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 if if i could just add this one point because it's really important and it will help us tie it all together my assignment for a few years after i i did the initial work you know i i've been given after i finished many many years of training uh i don't know how many years 40 years of spiritual training in different disciplines i was asked and horrified when i was asked to to assist in facilitating the work of dismantling the underlying structure on an energetic level of the patriarchal system and that's what's captured as you said in my book right. after that the assignment that i was given on planet earth was to help women stand in their power and i began to look closely at this issue that we're discussing and i realized something very important which we need to bring forward and that is that a woman must first learn to throw off her conditioning and stand in her own power before she can model how to stand in her power with balance for men so most women are so tied in to the masculine to the males in their lives that they feel oh my god i'm i'm going to leave my husband my brother my father behind how sad is that because women have good hearts and their hearts are very open right but the thing that a woman has to understand is yes for a time you must energetically leave the men behind in your life until you can find your own power until you can work through your emotional e- um egoic structure your emotional baggage until you can put to rest the the um uh, the judgments that you have about the masculine and feminine that's your own inner spiritual work right and so if you simply simply take some time to yourself and do that inner work registering the whole time that everything outside of us yes it exists but on another level is simply a projection of our own consciousness if tyrants are outside again it is because we have not reconciled victim tyrant within yeah. and so we do our very quiet inner work of learning to process reviewing our lives clearing our egoic structure dealing with our emotional baggage and finally one day faster than has ever been possible we're able to stand in our own power without any judgment and that is the moment that you can reach out a hand to the man or the men in your lives and say now now i understand you at a deep level now i have total empathy for what you are going through because i'm no longer in reaction i'm no longer reacting to you i've put those things to rest now i can turn and help you or simply by example i can model for you what it feels like to be balanced right yeah right right so right i think this is uh, this is so powerful and everybody who's listening we are listening to lucia rene over here the author of unplugging the patriarchy the mystic the the most enlightened person as per my own knowledge and i uh, i've read her we've, we've seen her we've seen her work around uh, women and we've seen her uh breaking out and breaking into uh patterns and things that we we always thought were not possible so we have this 
really really lovely lady with us who's talking about these things please do listen in carefully uh, to what's coming next so lucia now let's let's uh, we, we this is this is very powerful this whole uh, woman thing and now you're helping women stand in their power but also you are very very clearly showing everybody the path into 2016 the energy that we're going to be walking into and the energy that we're going to face when 2016 comes in uh i read your blog which is which is called your back is up against the wall and uh, i was uh, laughing because i was speaking with my husband when i was reading this blog um because just a day before that i was talking with him and i said the time has come for all of us to put everything that we have ever known and uh, i don't know if it is just the consciousness or the spiritual part of understanding but everything uh, that we have ever known starting from the time we've ever uh uh understood anything to put that into action now now is probably the time and this is just the day before that i was reading your blog uh so give us uh, uh an overview or a peep into what we are looking forward to in 2016 what kind of energy are we going to face or is it coming to um, uh, and what should we be doing at this point of time <laughs> well first of all I have to say isn't it wonderful that you can turn to your husband and have that conversation <laughs> I, I woke him up in the he was resting on a Saturday and I said listen I have something to talk to you and uh, this is when I was just reading your blog and the day before that we were out uh, you know just picking up some grocery and I was in the car with him and he's driving and I you know I keep r- going on these rants about what's going on in my head and I told him I said this is the time has come and uh, i i've gone through some experiences myself uh, in recent times where i said everything that i've ever known uh, has been put to test and has been put to action whether or not i wanted it and i was i was my back was actually against the wall and uh, when and we talked about this and the next day i'm looking at your blog and i'm laughing and i woke him up he was asleep and i said now listen to this and i read it out to him you know the whole of it and um we were laughing and i said i'm i'm speaking with lucia after you know on on monday and let's see what she has to say about this this is this is so powerful so please take us through that and let us know what is what we are looking forward to well well the reason the reason these things are happening to you is because you are willing for them to happen to you that's really a huge part of it my formula is have a daily meditation practice in order to return to what is real and important and that is silence that is divinity have a processing technique so you can learn to navigate the emotional body and bring the egoic structure to rest and be willing to ask for help those three things so if we say to spirit if we say to god i am willing to change now i am willing to become not only fluid but formless just show me the way then spirit will show us the way no right. <laughs> yes but the but the 2000 and energetically we have to back up just a little bit to the end of 2015 Right. because my seeing is and and many people's seeings are that there are three major final waves of ascension for the planet i do dowsing with a pendulum and a chart and i actually asked yesterday if we go all the way back to 2014 to the winter solstice and then we track through 2015 where we had what was um i see the first uh major la- last wave in this last phase the major a major wave in the september equinox right? right and then that rolled into the december solstice and stabilized now we're approaching march and this next second of three waves has kicked in yeah. this will intensify throughout the march equinox and then we'll enter a period of stabilization going into the summer solstice right. or the the Ju- june solstice right. and then we go into the third wave in september and it will all stabilize by the end of the year Mm-hmm. So I went all the way back to 2014 and I said between the December solstice of 2014 the December solstice of 2016 what how how uh, to what degree to what percentage will the vibration the spiritual vibration 
Or, you know, you could talk about it in terms of the Schumann resonance, right. which people are investigating now and saying, wow, the Schumann resonance used to be 7.8 something, and now it's like 10, now it's 15, it's going up. Right. What's happening to the earth herself, yeah? She's cycling. She's cycling spiritually. She's cycling in terms of energy. She is doing this as a cleansing process. And so it is up to each of us. You know, when I asked that question, it was 100%. She will cycle 100%. That's phenomenal in two years. I mean, it's taken us thousands and thousands of years of very gradual growth to get to this point and now things are so accelerated that we have actually left time behind there is no more time and soon we will be leaving space behind because expansion is so accessible and so visceral right. in one's meditation and in one's life once one integrates it right. so we have these three waves of the ascension and they are colossal and about three weeks ago, around the middle of August, uh, not middle of August, the middle of um, February, we began to feel this increasing intensity. So you may have noticed yourself uh, going through emotional outbursts. You may have noticed people around you uh, having a lot of difficulty emotional, sp emotionally spinning out. This is because the Earth's vibration is increasing. Yeah. So our job, as I started to say a moment ago, is to stay in sync, right. to synchronize our vibration with hers. Right. And that means, again, clearing, getting rid of our control issues, being willing to simply sit back in our own divinity, relax back into that and allow the currents to simply uh, guide us in our lives, right? The more we can do that, the more we are synchronized with the earth as she goes through these three massive waves and each one right. is becoming more intense. And conscious on the on the planet who are not conscious most people are walking around and would not understand anything right. that we are saying today mm -hmm. and that's no judgment against them they are younger souls they are naive souls mm -hmm. they are here to learn by playing everything out in the physical and yes we look at that and we see how painful that is and we have tremendous compassion for that right but that is not where the people listening to this discussion are at in terms of their spiritual evolution. Right. They have more spiritual evolution and they have the capacity to work things out on the level of consciousness. Right. Yeah. So, so our backs are, as you say, very much up against the wall. Something has to give. And the planet, it seems to me, is doing this almost as a purging process. She's saying, either you sync up with me and you get real about what has happened to my body. You have to clean up your act. You have to stop abusing me, which in essence is abusing yourself because right. we are the same. Right. We are the made up right. of the earth when we right. take embodiment. So to abuse the earth is to abuse ourselves. Right. And, and we have all of this manipulation of control and hierarchy. And yes, that vibration is, is incorrect in terms of consciousness. It hampers consciousness. It limits consciousness. That vibration needs to leave right. this planet, and it is time. And they're getting the message. It is time for you to leave. It is time for the meek, as they say, to inherit the planet of Earth right. and to return it into a, to a balanced state. But she is doing fine. We don't have to worry about the Earth, in my estimation. She is cycling up and taking care of herself and to hell with those who can't keep up. And that's actually, again, not a judgment. is at the level where they need to learn in their evolution, where they need to continue this learning around polarities, around things being out of balance. Okay. It is to the advantage 
for them to continue playing the games of polarity. Oh, it's to their advantage to perhaps drop the body and take another incarnation somewhere else where they can continue to play on this field. Right. It's their evolutionary path. Yes. And so we have to be willing without any judgment to allow everybody to choose their path. Right? right. right. So the problem that we as spiritual seekers or spiritual aspirants have is that we tend to get sucked in emotionally. Why? Because we have good hearts, because we feel compassion for that. But there comes a time when you must recognize that everybody is choosing, everybody's highest self is choosing what is in their highest good. Right. And to say to certain people in your life, I love you. I'll never stop loving you, but our vibration is very different now. And in order for me to be honest, to be true, to be to honor my own spiritual evolution, at least for the short term, until we see how this is going to outplay, right. I need to take a step back from this relationship. Yes. Right. I I, I think yeah. This is um, this this is what is needed, and um, I personally am aware of. A couple of people who are facing this difference in vibration, uh, while one person is still in probably uh, an, an older soul, and the and the other one is not such an older soul, and they are they are struggling to walk together because they don't fully understand that this is just a vibrational difference, and both the people have absolute right to choose uh, their path and the the height that they want to take in their spiritual evolution. And uh, this is so powerful that if we can we can communicate this, and when people can receive this or embrace this as as uh, the truth, uh, as a simple truth, um, this can be this can be an amazing way to transform your lives and to make the best use of what's coming in your spiritual evolution. Okay, now I want to ask you. Uh, we are uh, we we uh, in 2016. Like the people who are already seeking the spiritual. Uh, uh, people like myself who are now uh, aspirants uh, in this world, uh, spiritual aspirants, how best can we optimize uh, this time to transform and upgrade ourselves? Well, I think it's very easy. If we, we need to do some deep soul searching. We need to sit with the question, you know, how, how far do I want to take it? In this incarnation, it's difficult to get an incarnation. If you if you're lucky enough to get an embodiment, to get an incarnation, and to have awakened to a certain degree, to have stepped on a spiritual path, that's of enormous value. And so, in my estimation, year is a year when our backs are up against the wall, when we can make tremendous progress, unprecedented progress if we just take a deep breath and say okay one more bout <laughs> one more bout right. with my ego and i can fly i can be liberated and it's true you can this year miracles can happen because we've entered the time when we can manifest anything we want so if you do that deep soul searching and you find within yourself yes i really do want to devote myself 100% to becoming liberated, to becoming the best that I can be. Right. Then you just say a prayer or you set an intent and you say, look, I don't know how to do this. My life is complicated. I have these people in my life and I know the vibration is different and I know I should walk away from this, but I don't see how. Can you please help me? Can you, Spirit, can you, God, can you, Rama, whoever it is that we pray to, the Divine Mother, can you please open the doors for me? And can you open them in such a way that I can't miss them? You can ask right. very specifically whatever you ask for right. is given to you always if you're asking from a conscious state. Yes. You know, now, now we may have things in the unconscious that are stepping on the brake and saying, don't go there, that's really dangerous, right? So it has to be deep soul searching. Right. You have to really say, at the end of the day, this is what I want. Absolutely. And then you simply ask, yeah. show me, open the doors. If you can open the doors and if you can give me the strength to walk through them, I will. Right? Right, right. absolutely. And absolutely. then… Yes then you're basically syncing up with the earth and with the formless state that we're in. Right. Because you're, you're saying, okay, I'm hands off. I'll do it. 
but spirit has to, to has to lead the way. Right. Spirit has to guide me. Right. And if spirit guides you, then really all you have to do this year, it's a very personal year in my estimation. Do your daily meditation practice because that's when you remember what is true and real. And learn an emotional processing technique if you don't already have one. And begin to use it as soon as possible. Hang out with people whose vibration is higher than yours. Hang out with people who know how to process. Hang out, if you're a woman, with other women who are fearless. Mm -hmm. This is the way we learn. We map to consciousness. We don't learn through intellectual means. That's such a tiny part of the package. We learn because our consciousness maps to somebody else's consciousness. And we're not trying to be them. They're not trying to be Lucia. They're not trying to be you. They're right. trying to be themselves, right. right? Right. But we can learn from mentors who have gone down the path before us, who are a little bit further down and looking back and say, come this way. This worked for me. Right. So if we expose ourselves to higher vibrations in whatever form we can find it, and it may be our animals. Right. Our animals don't fight with their intellect. They're totally synced up with the earth, Right. right. Yeah, so we just sync up with the earth, we get out and walk on the earth, we come into contact with the earth, we take our shoes off and we walk on the grass so that we're synced up with the earth and her movements, her escalation in consciousness this year. If we do these things for ourselves quietly, privately, if we don't get too sucked into the emotions, if we work through our judgments, we can literally fly this year in 2016. Wow. I, I'm, I'm looking to fly. So we are looking <laughs> forward to 2016. And I'm, I'm absolutely certain because I've always got what I've asked for. So I'm going to ask for a lot more this year and make sure that, you know, um, I'm ready to receive and I'm in sync with what uh, the earth energy is saying. So this is, this is amazing. I tell Lucia, I want to know about your best friend, Lakshman. So this is Lakshmana is your friend. <laughs> yeah, I saw that and I said, "Oh, this is this is this is something that I need to ask her." <laughs> yeah, yeah. My um, well, it's a, a. Do we have time for just a, a yes, three yes, or four yes, minute story? Yes, yes. Yeah, because this is so Hindu. But my teacher in this lifetime, who I studied with for seventeen years, he was enlightened, fully enlightened master. He was American, yeah. but he had had most of his lives in the in the Far East yeah. and had been enlightened in many many lifetimes. So his enlightenment came back, and he was a mystic and he was a full fully self realized master. And so I had a very long and and arduous <laughs> apprenticeship with him. And um, so I have this dog who had incarnated with me since ancient Egypt. And at one point, uh, Rama, my teacher, looked at this dog and he said, oh, isn't this interesting? They have found each other in every lifetime since ancient Egypt. They always somehow come back, these two souls, and find each other. <laughs> and he was my protector. You know, when he was around, he would help me hold the energy right. and, and make sure I didn't get into trouble and make sure I stayed on my spiritual path. Right. And I've actually toured Europe, you know, and walked into museums and seen pictures of myself and it's been like looking in a mirror and then I'll look down at at my feet in the picture and there will be my dog and I'll look at his eyes I say oh my god that's the dog (laughs) (laughs) so yeah this is true I think this is uh, it's always how souls meet each other and how they connect and where they connect a lot of people who are aware will probably be able to see this so when I'm hearing this I'm 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 laughing because uh gone through similar experiences and I know for sure that they, they come to you and you go to them as and when uh, yeah. it's needed. So it's it's so amazing. It's beautiful. I saw the picture and I said, whoa, this is this is cool. This is very nice. Yeah, so 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 that dog reincarnated again in this lifetime. He we were together twice and out of honor to my to my teacher, Rama, I named him Rama. Uh And I said, well, I want to get two. I want to get his brother. And if I'm naming him Rama, then obviously I have to name the other one Lakshmana. Right, right. (laughs) Because the the Ramayana, the Ramayana (laughs) is is one of my favorite books. And and going back to what we talked about, you know, about how misinterpreted the scriptures are, I can read the Ramayana and and listen to the excerpts about 
they change that. <laughs> right. No, I, I think yeah, it's, it's pretty much, I mean, because I think the way we understand it, the way, way we receive it, uh, because I, uh, my, I personally have been through just about every scripture that I could lay my hands on. And the language they speak is so powerful. And the way it is misinterpreted, it's hurtful to watch people go through misinterpretations and lives go by living those misinterpretations. So that's not that's not nice. But, well, I think that's, um, that's again, a process that the world is going through. And uh, I'm sure with, with 2016 coming in, things are going to change for a lot for people who are willing and who are looking for this uh, spiritual enhancement in their lives. So, uh, Lucia, thank you very, very much. I am, I'm so, I'm, I, I wish I could, I mean, I, I would love to speak to you for longer if you have more time, but um, I am so grateful that you did, did come here and uh, share your uh, wisdom with us. Well, let's do it again, shall we? Because I, I'm so thrilled to have this opportunity to connect with, uh, with women and with men in your part of the world. And I totally honor the work that you're doing. Very, very important. I, I'm so, grateful for the thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I think this is all of us have got our own uh, jobs over here. So I, I believe that this is my, my part of the job that I'm supposed to do over here in this particular incarnation that I have and I'm going to take it as far as I can so I'm looking forward to 2016 to make that happen and oh, very good. I'm so excited so uh, thank you once again uh, so to the listeners this was the wonderful Lucia Rene um, and talking about her uh, her book the the things that we have faced as women for over 5,000 years of patriarchy. And for all those who are looking for spiritual enhancement in 2016, the energy of the earth has changed. Since, uh, since 2012, we have been giving up form to enter fluidity. And after that, uh, moving into a place of formlessness. So if you want to take full advantage of 2016 and the energies of 2016, go down there and, and be willing, open yourself up to uh, the fact that this year could transform whatever you have done so far. You'll be tested for everything. You've, your back would be up against the wall. And whatever you know so far will be put into just not just test, but also into action. And you will be going out there full out. Be open. Uh, and as Lucia says, get down to the processes. Meditate every day to get to that place. And figure out some emotional processing techniques. Hang out with people who have this higher vibration than, your, than yourself so you can learn and see them and watch them. Be with more women who are fearless or men who are more fearless and expose uh, yourself to higher vibrations. Sync up with this earth energy and make the best of 2016. This was Lucia Rene for you. And thank you so much for listening. This is Ava Banerjee signing out. And uh, see you next week or speak with you next week. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Thank you.